On this episode of The Exchange, I speak to Jess Bacon about how social media can be a powerful way of bringing people together. And Max Dossel discusses why it's so important that we take control of our devices. Jess, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of The Exchange to talk a bit about social media. You're a writer and a blogger with a dedicated online following. How did you get into blogging in the first place? Yeah, so I think I was back in sixth form and I kind of wanted a space to talk about how I was feeling. Um, My dad had just passed away from cancer and I really struggled to kind of talk to people about it. And I knew a couple of people that had blogs and kind of wrote online. And I thought actually it was a really good way to get out how I was feeling, kind of write down everything that I was thinking as well. And especially at a time when I couldn't really say it. So it became sort of an outlet for me just to kind of write creatively, um, document a bit of my life. And then it kind of went to university and it became a bit more prevalent that it was something I was really interested in. I was doing English anyway, but I wanted a space to kind of write creatively and a blog was like a perfect solution for that. And actually it's so powerful just looking at your social media channels that you share this really honest story with people. Um, you've mentioned that already about the fact that you have, have written about um, losing your dad, but you've also written about breakups and your battles with depression and um, recently even about the struggles of lockdown, which I found really useful to read. Um, what motivates you to, to speak so openly about these things? I think a lot of things in life happen that are kind of that make you want to hide from the world and hide certain aspects of your life out of shame or guilt um, or embarrassment. And I definitely spent a lot of my time doing that, especially kind of during my teenage years. So I think I've kind of as I've got older, I've started to share more of that online and talk more about it, because the thing is, a lot of people really relate to the honest truth. Like, I think the days of social media being very um, inspiring or like aspiring to this kind of perfect life has gone and we all just want a bit of comfort that we're actually not alone and that we all go through these things and actually life doesn't really go the way that we hope it would sometimes and it doesn't really go how we plan no one's life is perfect and I think it's really important to talk about the bits that maybe a couple of years ago we probably would have hidden away. I've definitely noticed that in recent years that actually social media there is now this um, real move to present as as close to reality as we we possibly can but obviously um then there are things that are different online to in real life there's a lot of um teenagers and um young people who who do use social media to to share a lot of of their life um have you got any advice in terms of what sorts of boundaries might be useful to put in place Mm. so i think maybe if, if it's something you're uncomfortable talking about or it makes you feel anxious or you're not sure how it's going to be received, maybe park it, maybe still write what you want to write, maybe still put it in your draft, but keep it there until you're comfortable with it. Because if it feels unsettling, that either means that you've, you're going to strike a chord with people and it's going to be really powerful, or it means that actually you're not ready to share that yet, and maybe that's something you never want to share. So I think it's mm-hmm. knowing if it feels uncomfortable for you, then it's not worth it. If it jeopardizes your mental health, or if you're spiraling in any kind of way, just don't go there and know what you're comfortable with and what you're not and just stick by your guns with that. That's really good advice. Hi, Max. Hello. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Just really to ask you a couple of questions about your background, obviously, Um, currently you're working for the Centre of Humane Technology but prior to that point you were working I believe for a tech company where you designed notification structures on social media. What did you learn from that job? Yeah so the way I'd sort of described that time was I said hey have you ever looked down at your phone or computer and then immediately gotten distracted and forgotten why? That was my job. It was my job to take you out of your world and bring you into mine because we were told by our investors, if we could hold your attention for two minutes or longer, then we have a valuable company. So, so many decisions went into, ooh, how many notifications should we send you a day without you turning them off? If we auto play videos inside of this experience, you're likely to spend 10% longer. So let's do that. And so there were so many decisions that went into how do we hold and grab as much of your time as possible that misalignment was very dangerous for like living life in ways that feel good for us. 
And that was what led me to the Center for Human Technology. Social media obviously gets a lot of bad press. What are your main concerns with social media? It looks like everybody is living their best life except you. Everybody's having a great time except you. Everyone is at the party except you. And when do we go to these apps? We go often in a moment of boredom or a moment of loneliness. We pull it out and just kind of mindlessly start to scroll. And those vulnerable emotional moments are the ones where we're hit with, oh, I'm not like that. Oh, they're in a relationship and I'm not. Oh, they've got the job or a career that they, they're on their path and I'm not. Mm -hmm. And I think these, these platforms really prey on those social dynamics because they want more screen time. And it's, it's really challenging, I think, to grow up in this world with social media and feel mentally healthy. A lot of what you're saying is coming down to who's in control. Um, what can we do to make sure that we're in control of our technology and it's not the other way around with our technology controlling us? Yeah, this is really hard because there are, there are a thousand engineers on the other side of the screen that are working really hard to grab and hold our attention. And so in my talks to teenagers, I say, raise your hand if you use Snapchat, every hand. Keep your hand up if you have any kind of streak going, every hand. Keep your hand up if you like Snapchat streaks. And then all their hands go down. And it's a powerful moment because it, it really, they can collectively see, oh yeah, there are some of these features, some of these things, we're doing them. I don't like doing them. Snapchat streaks are a chore. We're being looked at as really lab rats in that study of how do we get more of your time? So a couple of things that are really helpful. Um, one is turning off any notifications that's not from a human being trying to reach you. So no, this person has liked your photo. And I mean, I really do like, I really recommend at least trying like for a week, try deleting some of these social apps from your phone, do it with friends because doing it alone, like really is like just challenging because everybody pulls out their phones and is on them and you're like, oh, this is lonely and I don't want to do it, but grab a group of friends and delete it for a week. See how it feels. Do you not want to go your whole life? Do you want to go your whole life not knowing what it's like to not have social media on your phone? It's a week. Try it. A lot of time is spent discussing how social media can be harmful for teenagers. Have you ever experienced, I suppose, the downside of social media? It is the case that you do get people that will just send abuse, um, which I've definitely experienced. And especially if your post hit the explore page on Instagram, anyone and everyone can see that photo. And I had it over the summer where a photo that I'd taken when I had kind of 10,000 followers reached over 200,000 people. And that's a lot of people to reach when you have a very small account and you're very new to Instagram. Um, so you do attract a lot of negative comments and it's being able to delete them essentially is what I do. I delete and block anyone that is going to send abuse. Um, I know that some people will share it just so they, people are aware that it does happen. But I think I just don't give airtime to anyone that doesn't have anything nice to say. Um, but it is an a really unfortunate and really detrimental part of social media but it's being able to um, notice it and delete it from the conversation so that it doesn't detract from whatever you're trying to whatever trying to message you're trying to spread. I guess the con concerns as we said though already the concerns are very real when it comes to social media and I don't think they're going away anytime soon. Um, how do you think social media though can be a force for good in the world? Social media has been amazing like social media in terms of bringing people together connecting people that are like-minded is it's phenomenal tool for doing that i've connected with so many amazing women that have lost their parents lost their dad specifically mm -hmm. um and we were all kind of the same age and at the time i maybe knew two or three people like that and it's been amazing to kind of connect with these amazing women um and discuss our experiences and feel slightly less alone a bit more heard a bit more part of a community and kind of um an experience that we all go through again in isolation with our own families and our own friends but it's when you talk to other people that have been through the same thing that you have you feel less alone and I think that's the, be the benefit of social media and like having a virtual online space especially after this year is that it just provides connection with people that you potentially mm -hmm. would never meet in real life and it's that meaningful connection I suppose that is where it's really beneficial and really powerful um I feel like in these slightly strange times we're living in, a lot of us are spending a lot more time on social media. How do you 
um, make sure that you maintain a healthy relationship with social media? Mm. I think I've definitely fallen into the trap this year of spending too much time on my phone and too much time on social media. And it's so easily done. It's, yeah. But I think, again, it's about boundaries. It's about knowing what you're comfortable with and what's not working for you. If you're kind of, the first thing you do in the morning is look at your phone, it's probably not going to help you in the long term. But yeah, and it's just knowing where to stop. And that's what's really difficult with social media because they are very addictive platforms. And there's always new content, there's always new things to see that even if you need to take a couple of days out or do you know what, it's not working for you right now, your mental health's not in the right place to look at other people's lives and think about your own, just take the time away from it. What sort of changes would you like to see some of these big tech companies like Facebook making in order to put our mental health in focus? yeah i mean a social network if you go back to the word social network to me should be something that enhances our social lives and like imagine how beautiful that world could be if all of these companies were competing to help illuminate the most amazing experiences the most like awesome people for us to connect with how do we help you get off the screen and connect in real life and i think if tech were really caring for us and thinking about us that way the possibilities are truly revolutionary for what they could do for our lives and for our social lives. And I would be very excited to live in that world. And if you had one piece of advice that you would want to give to teenagers watching this, what would that be? I think it would be this digital persona is a trap. Like it's a trap and it's a trap that can really wreak havoc on your mental health and on your sense of self. The person that you really are has very little to do with what goes on in that screen. And I know that that is so hard to see or feel or understand when it becomes so much of our lives, but so much meaning, so much satisfaction, so much of the growth that happens in life does not happen in those environments. They might contribute, they might help, they might like, they might add something to your life in a very real way. But if we're putting who we are and what matters to us in these little digital boxes that are designed like slot machines for kids that are trying to steal your time, boy, is that a losing battle. And if you think about it, a lot of our phones are designed a lot like slot machines. Every time that we hit one of those little red icons, we're playing the slot machine of, ooh, what am I gonna get? Ooh, how many likes did I get on this? Ooh, did that one person that I really wanted to like my photo, did they like my photo? And sometimes they did and sometimes they didn't. And when they did, we get that emotional hit. And when they didn't, it's like we didn't win on the slot machine. And even if you think about literally the motion, TikTok is literally a slot machine. Like, what am I gonna get? What am I gonna get? What am I gonna get? Sometimes it makes me laugh. Sometimes maybe it turns me on a little bit. Sometimes I learn something new. It's well, sometimes I win and sometimes I don't. And so figuring out who you are, what you like and what you really want in your life and what you really want in your world and your social life and your relationships and then letting tech be like a bonus, a bonus of that and how it can help those things, I think is so important and so hard. Max, thank you so much for joining us on the exchange today and for some of those really helpful things that you said there. Um, yeah, great advice. So thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I hope it was helpful and I uh, hope to see you soon.